Hello and welcome to the latest Aston Originals and on the menu today is cultivated meat. We ask, is this the food of the future? Now with me are Professor Claire Farrow from our School of Psychology and Dr Irene Theodosu, Senior Lecturer, Infrastructure and Sustainable Engineering. So first question for you Irene, what is cultivated meat? So cultivated meat or cultured meat or lab grown meat, as it is known, is an alternative, it's not an alternative meat, but it's an alternative way of making meat. So if you think of traditionally for the thousands of years now, what people used to do, they used to uh, grow crops, to feed animals, to slaughter the animals, to eat the animals. Um, if you look at uh, the latest statistics and uh, the need for uh, meat consumption is going to increase by 2050 by 50 percent. So this way of traditionally making meat is very unsustainable. So the way that we are looking into using cultivated meat is a new alternative way which is not going to slaughter animals and is going to be good for the planet. So how does that work? Okay, so it all starts with a, a simple biopsy. So you take the animal, I say a cow, and then you take a little biopsy. Um, uh, that, that's quite invasive, but it's much better than killing the animal and the animal lives. So there's a little bit of pain, you take the, bi the biopsy and then you isolate the cells, the cells of interest from that biopsy. Normally these will be adult stem cells. Then after that, you take the cells and then you create a little cell bank, okay? And these cells, are you can use them indefinitely. So you can uh, create, for example, from one cow, from one biopsy, you can create up to 175 million burgers. So it's quite a lot of wow. burgers. Now, because you have a very small amount of cells, you need to expand these cells to make a big cell mass if you want to make kilograms, for example. And what you do then, you use big reactors, big vessels such as the brewery industry, uh, let's say 200,000 litres reactors, and you put some nutrients and you put the cells and the cells will grow and expand and you're going to create the cell mass. Now, another big problem with this is that these cells need a surface to attach to. So this is what we call the scaffolds. So you have to make scaffolds, and this is something we are doing here at Aston. We are creating these scaffolds. We use different polymers, they're edible polymers, and then the cells attach and proliferate. And in order to make meat, these cells have to be uh, create to have to create fat and have to create muscle and in the end when you have enough cell mass then you harvest this and then you form it into the product you want. Okay it sounds very complex but it also sounds like a good solution to this big problem we've got facing this whole food security problem. Um, so Claire um, can you tell me um, what are the issues with meat? Looking more at the psychological aspect now, is this cultivated, cultured, lab-produced meat, what are the problems with this? And, and what are the benefits as well? I think in terms of the, the reasons why we would we would want to sort of start thinking about cultivated meat, the issues with current meat production, I know Irene has already talked about um, the problems with how much meat we're consuming and whether that's sustainable. Um, one of the biggest drivers, I think, is the contribution that the meat industry has to greenhouse gases. So meat farming um, uses more greenhouse gases than cars, um, trains, buses, boats, aeroplanes, all forms of transport. It's one of the, the biggest contributors. And when you think about a chicken breast, for example, if you were to cook a dinner with a couple of chicken breasts, that's probably going to have used around a thousand um, litres of water just to get that chicken breast onto your plate. So when you think about the environmental impact of meat and the, the sustainability of the increasing drive and desire to eat meat, that's one of the main the main drivers. There's also other issues with meat intake. Obviously, animal welfare being a, a big 
big part of that and the the the, the risk of kind of disease spread um through through meat not being handled properly um, but also meat, um, we know that eating too much processed meat isn't necessarily good for us. And lots of people, I think more than 80% of people have said that they've tried to reduce their meat intake over the past year. So there's lots of reasons to think about reducing meat intake or looking for perhaps more, more healthy alternatives to a lot of the factory farmed meat that we do consume. Um, and that's really where you know clean meat, cultivated meat, whatever you want to call it, comes in. I think in terms of the the problems, the, the barriers um, to to acceptance of this, the, the biggest barrier, I suppose, is the the cost. The first cultivated meat burger cost about a quarter of a million pounds to produce <laughs> because of the kind of the research and development that went behind that, and you know, innovation costs costs money, but. The biggest kind of psychological barriers are, are, you know, people's perceptions of this. It's a new technology and, um, you know, there's a lot of wariness around that, you know, understandably. And I think it's really important that the, the whole industry is very open about how how it's manufactured, how it's made and, and, and what, that. So, do you know what the, the public attitude is at the moment towards this meat? Are they likely yeah. to go into their local supermarket and buy a packet of this mints yeah well they struggle with that because it's not it's not available it, it, the only country that's uh, i think i think are really is singapore, singapore that currently you know there is access for consumers but um the main the main when, when people are asked about whether they would try cultivated meat around uh, it depends on how you ask them and, and who you ask but around a third to a quarter of people uh, probably a third to a quarter of people will say that they would be quite happy to try that and a lot of the factors that predict whether people would try it are one, one of the psychological factors we call neophobia, which is your fear of new foods, how willing you would be to try something new. So some people are more neophobic than others. Other people are more what we call neophilic than others. They're more likely to try new, different things. They, they, they enjoy that, that experience. So there are individual differences that guide our kind of food acceptance. But there's also a lot of different kind of background characteristics that might shape whether you be likely to try so for example your age you know um people have looked at you know religion diet quality people who are more likely to reduce their meat intake and want a healthier diet might be more interested for example in the you know the way that the food's made that there's less you know obviously we haven't got the animal welfare issues of factory farmed meat for example so those kinds of things but we've also been looking at for example um what people are told about cultured meat and how that might shape their their willingness to try so for example you when you explain what cultivated meat is to somebody you can talk about the environmental benefits or you can talk about the animal welfare benefits or you could talk about the potential health benefits of the future because the meat could be adapted to become more healthy than conventional meat so when you tell people about those different things that can affect their willingness to try um, and we're quite interested in that and how people are, are taught about, you know, what it, what it involves. Because one of the biggest barriers, I think, that when I talk to people about it is that they say, well, it doesn't sound natural. But then when you start to think about um, animals that are bred in, in farmed conditions, you know, who can't, don't necessarily see daylight, don't necessarily see grass, they're given antibiotics and they can't even walk, you know, chickens sometimes because of the amount that they're, of, their, of their weight. That the questions of naturalness, you know, sort of start to, to to look different, I think, in people's minds. So, we've been conducting work in in our department with with Irene you know, about you know what people are told when when they when they're educated about what cultivated meat is and how that can frame their their willingness to try. And is it too soon to tell us what you found? It is too soon. Or? Yeah, we, I mean, at the moment we've been looking at. There's been other work that's looked, for example, at taste prime. So when you tell people that this meat could be like the best burger, because obviously you can manipulate the taste so that it tastes really good. You know, the main taste, I think, from meat eating is from the, the fat of the meat. And that's something you could control. Um, and so in the future, the, the hope is that we would be able to manufacture something that tastes really, really good, that has, you know, a, a consistent texture that people like. And so... There is research that suggests that if people think it would taste better, they'd be, they'd be more willing to try it. But also that if they think it's better for the environment, certain people are quite driven by that. Yeah, because I also think taste is one of the big problems with cultivated meat. A lot of the time the cultivated meat is quite grainy and people don't like it. 
And what we're trying to do <coughs> here with Claire is, uh, and the rest of the team, um, for, as an engineer, I'm developing solutions, I'm developing new materials, etc. But at the end of the day, if the customers don't approve it, there's no point me doing everything I'm doing. So we are trying to get almost customer perception and approval whilst we're developing the process to make cultivated meat. Yeah, I think I think ultimately whether people are willing to try cultivated meat will depend upon people understanding that this is a solution to a major problem that we have with the current situation with the sustainability and the cost of, of meat intake for the environment. But whether people are willing to keep eating it will depend upon the taste and the cost yeah. ultimately. Now, finally, one question for you. So we've already looked at, you know, what's the next steps and what could happen in the future. Imagine you had a crystal ball, say in five years time, what do you think would be the situation as regards cultivated meat? Do you think it will, people will be eating it or, I mean, this is putting you on the spot a bit, but what are your it's thoughts? Probably better to answer Absolutely, that. absolutely. So in Singapore, they're already eating cultivated meat. It's the first country, as we mentioned before with Claire, that approved the sale of cultivated meat. So they're selling cultivated chicken. Um, and uh, they are expecting that by the end of this year, they're going to be selling some cultivated meat in the US. Um, we, there's so much investment because governments and organizations have realized that this is the future. This is the only sustainable way of, of feeding um, the meat uh, needs of um, people in the planet. So uh, we are expecting that at least in the next five years, it's going to be in the supermarkets for sure, and people will be trying it. Uh, the price, Claire mentioned, was a quarter of a million pounds uh, in 2013 when the first cultivated burger uh, was produced. Today is nine euros. So the, it has gone dramatically down, and we're planning to, to bring it down even more. So there's a lot of investment. Uh, governments are behind everything, so we're going to see it in the supermarkets for sure i think eventually the idea is that when it's mass scaled up that it would eventually be cheaper than you know factory farmed meat mm -hmm. um, that, that's that's the ultimate yeah goal. so the aim is so to be have that choice yeah know. the aim is to be as taste or even tastier than traditionally produced meat and as cheap or even cheaper than traditionally produced and meat so, healthier <laughs> and have it will be healthier for sure which also like the cost factor the current cost of living crisis um it sort of ties into that so that that's another potential plus point about this yeah so it's a case of wait and see and see what the future holds but we could all be going to the supermarket in a few years time and buying meat that isn't quite meat <laughs> okay thank you for joining me um so thanks to our two experts here and don't forget you can follow aston originals on twitter and subscribe on youtube <laughs>